the message will be titled living from the inside out the world we live in today typically lives from the outside in instead of the inside out not long ago I think a year or two we've had this situation in the in the playground of our church where a little hole developed and a surface of the ground started to kind of slowly cave in it wasn't a big hole it was maybe the size of the ball at first and then the school that rented the facility turns out that they investigated that hole and they found out it wasn't just a hole but this was a hole that led to a tunnel underneath over playground in the church so they quickly closed that area off and they couldn't kids couldn't walk over there because they found out that there is a height of a my dad's height size of empty space of a tunnel that was in our playground and you know the school quickly figured out how we all came to America through the tunnel from Alaska all the way from there and how most of you came from Mexico all through that that was underneath of our church guys I'm just kidding that was not how we came here and not how you came here and so what happened is that the reason why they closed down the nobody from walking there nobody from playing there we couldn't park our cars there is because there was an emptiness that existed under the surface and in fact the surface started to slowly cave in into that empty well or empty tunnel whatever that was in we still couldn't figure out what it was sometimes people live their lives and the surface of their life caves in into their soul and it's not that the life is heavy it's that heart is empty we blame life and say well just my life is difficult but you know there are people who've been in a lot worse situations that you are and not only they came out but they thrived above that and there are people I've met and probably you have as well who actually on the outside have nothing going on that's bad and they're full of depression they're dying on the inside bleeding out on the inside and a lot of times you can have a small grass and it will cave in into that hole not because the grass is too heavy not because the little children are too heavy it's that there is nothing under the surface that could sustain the surface see many Christians today live the same way where their soul has a hole and everything on the surface in their life small pressure small problem or small success any kind of weight of responsibility becomes so heavy to bear that it caves in now we all collapse differently some people when they collapse they drink some people when they collapse they become quickly irritated agitated some people can't sleep at night some people when they collapse they just go into drugs some people they go into pornography some just simply become angry we respond differently to when the surface collapses inside of us but the common problem that runs through all of this is that our heart is empty not our problems are too heavy we do need to sometimes rid of ourselves of certain things maybe get rid of some debt, debt toxic relationships get a psychologist a counselor go into marriage counseling maybe perhaps lose some weight and perhaps stop this and stop that all of these things have their place but none of them will be enough to fix the hole in the soul sooner or later the kids had to run in the playground the sooner or later you know the problem wasn't that the kids were too heavy the problem is the ground had nothing to support it and so when my pastor and Ivan and a few others started to bring some dirt and compress the dirt in that hole it covered that hole and now in fact at this moment my car is parked right on that place where before it couldn't handle kids running over it see your heart is designed to be not a place that reflects your circumstances but a place which hosts the Holy Spirit and changes your circumstances the Bible says in Proverbs that guard your heart above all things for out of it spring forth the issue of life in Luke it says that a good man out of the good treasure brings forth good in both of these places or in John 7 verse 38 it says he who believes in me out of his heart will flow out the rivers of water so I see three scriptures in which God says that not the outside supposed to come inside but the inside supposed to come on the outside and so God doesn't want me to live from the outside in 
But because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, He wants me to live from the inside out. But before I can live from the outside, from the here out, I have to stop the intrusion, the, the flow of all the garbage inside of my soul. See, many of our hearts are like septic tank. Septic tank is something that is hidden and all the sewer from the house goes into it. Many of us, we become, we turn our heart into a garbage can. What all the problems of life find the resting place in the heart of our life. And then we no longer can change our circumstances. Why? Because we've been changed by our circumstances. But the Bible says a man is transformed by the renewing of his mind. And his life is changed when his mind changes. The Bible doesn't say when all of your life changes, then your mind, your emotional state being, your attitude will change. That's not how it works in the kingdom of God. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And because of that, God wants to change your inside today. And so out of that, it will flow into your circumstances and produce change in your circumstances. Are you with me? A secret place is not only a physical place where I go to prayer to see and visit God. A secret place is a state of mind in which God visits me. Let me say that again. A secret place is not just a place to which I go to meet God. A secret place is a state of my mind into which God comes and meets me here. In here scripture says things like pray without ceasing if we know that that's not possible to pray on your knees without stopping day and night or at least every single day Paul knew most of us have jobs we have a school to go to we have families to raise and so praying without ceasing that's not possible so Paul I don't think he was referring for us to praying like this without ceasing he was talking about something else where we can stay in communion with God even while we're doing our duties, responsibilities and household chores. Jesus says abide in me as the branch abides in the vine. And then out of that he says pray then to the Father, ask him whatever you want out of a place of abiding. Abiding is not just sitting and praying and reading the Bible. It's a mental state of a person linked and connected to God whether he mows the lawn, takes photos, washes dishes, plays with children. His mind, his heart is somehow, some way connected, sends these pulses to God, meditates on God, relies on God and thinks about God. And out of that place that man begins to then pray and his prayer is an extension of his secret place. We all meditate. Every person who says, I don't know how to meditate. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. <laughs> Not all of us will pray all the time, but we all think all the time. And the Lord wants us to turn our thinking into meditation upon Him. Now, sometimes it's not easy to meditate. Now, let me, before I talk about the meditation, let me correct something. Today in our culture, the topic of meditation has become extremely popular through yoga, through, I mean, I have it on my phone, breathe app, just during worship, it showed up, breathe. I was like, I mean, what, what, what was I doing up to this point? What was I not breathing? <laughs> you know, and then it says breathe deeply. And so there is a, there's this thing in our culture, it's put on our phones, the importance of conscious breathing and all kinds of, you know, channeling all kinds of energy. And, and, and most of that stuff is purely demonic. The reason why is because the meditation New Age presents is all about emptying yourself. The meditation the scripture talks about 23 times is all about filling yourself. Meditation the world talks about is all about detaching from the reality. Meditation God talks about is always attaching to His presence, His promise and His power. The meditation in here is always passive. Christian meditation is always aggressive. It's a warfare. Meditation, you don't see meditation when you sit and you just chill. That's not meditation. Not, not the kind of world we live in. 
the kind of world we live scripture talks about meditation you take your thoughts captive it talks about think on these things that's that's aggressive that's intentional that's actually not trying to think about nothing that's trying to think about something so that's completely different and that's why this meditation can get you demons this meditation gets you miracles this meditation it says he meditates on him day and night and he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water the word, book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but meditate in it day and night and you will make your way successful and you will have good success this meditation produces miracles in partnership with holy spirit dear friends secret place every person can have a secret place without praying five to seven hours every single day because five to seven hours every day already you and i think you don't have to do anything different to live in a secret place you just have to think different to live in a secret place you can still do what you do but change your thoughts from thoughts to talks with God in your thoughts you know how a lot of times in our thoughts we talk to people like I'm gonna say this to them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply, I'm you know how they're and we have this whole conversation going and nobody else is there listening except you. You know what if that imaginary conversation is just switched a frequency, my, my car doesn't have a bluetooth um, to play music from my phone and so what we had to do is we had to buy this um, aftermarket device you put into this place where you uh, create a smoking, how do you call that? Uh, not smoke detector the, the the lighter yeah you put that into the lighter and uh and then what you do is that on the radio you switch to a particular frequency and the moment you switch to that particular frequency everything from your phone begins to play through the stereo see that's exactly how our mind is it's like that radio what God wants us to do is he wants us to switch to the frequency we're still something is always playing and God says why don't you switch to the frequency where my stuff starts playing and the rest of the stuff goes silent it's still there the rest of the frequencies are still in my car they're just not sounding no more you just don't hear them anymore and you hear the sound of this particular thing that I want to play God wants us throughout the day to capture dominant thoughts that are playing in our mind and just switch the frequency to his promise his presence his power his presets come on Lord give me one more P <laughs> his principles <laughs> his peace and we can go to all other things that the Lord wants us to switch things on now I understand every single person here let's face the reality when we begin to even think about thinking it gets it gets hard sometimes it's the hardest thing to do is to actually think what I try to do to myself and I would like to encourage you to do the same when you catch your mind wondering when you catch your mind debating with people when you catch your mind arguing fighting when you catch your mind worried and going into that cycle you for a moment take a pause walk out from from that and ask yourself this question who is more real that which I'm thinking about or the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is more real secondly who is greater that which I am thinking about or the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is and number three, who can actually change and alter my circumstances? The fact that I'm worried about it or the Holy Spirit? Sometimes our mind is get locked in into that like a broken tape when it constantly rehearses something negative or something evil. Let's imagine for example, actually a gentleman came to me after the first service. I mentioned the example of if you have a flat tire, you can't change the tire and you realize you know your flat tire you need to buy a new tire oh actually you need to update all the all the tires and they're expensive and you don't have enough money and that thought leads to another one the fact that you're broke it leads to another thought the fact that your life sucks it leads to another thought that but the fact that all of your dreams are on a pause and you know what you don't like your life that one flat tire can lead into a train of thought where everything is so so bad all it takes to stop that train of thought is a phone call saying your dad is in a coma quickly your tire no longer a problem why because a bigger problem came it made that problem no problem at all that's how our mind works the only way to replace 
the unstoppable train of thought in our mind constantly is to give it something bigger someone greater and more powerful to think about and that someone is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is greater than what you're worried about the Holy Spirit is more real than what you're conscious about the Holy Spirit can actually bring change to that situation that constant thinking about it isn't doing anything except bringing it more depression more fear and more anxiety in Philippians 4 it says don't be anxious for anything but in everything in prayer in supplication with thanksgiving made your requests known to God see it means when you're worried about something you open your mouth and you say God I'm stressed out about this but I'm letting you know I'm giving that to you I want to think about you I want to think about your promise I want to think about miracles I want to think about your love I want to think about your faithfulness I want to think about your presence the fact that you are with me the fact that you are for me the fact that you never leave me the fact that you never abandon me the fact that you defeated death the fact that you rose from the dead the fact you're coming back on a white horse and I'm coming with you when you make your request known to God in the next verse it says and the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind see when you let your worries go to God God sends his security his insurance his protection what his peace becomes a thing where it goes like this over your heart and over your mind and it begins to guard you and the problems hit the peace but they no longer hit you why because you are in a secret place you're meditating and your meditation protects you your meditation actually invites his presence inside you can be right in the middle of fields picking cherries but the presence of the Holy Spirit is residing in you the same way Judas was in the middle of the last supper but demons resided in him scripture says in John chapter 13 devil put on the heart of Judas to betray Jesus and then Judas allowed those thoughts to come in he meditated on them though physically he was with Jesus physically he got on his knee together with Jesus uh, together with Jesus they preached all of the stuff but on the inside there was a hole in his soul there was something else cooking on the inside and Judas just thought oh I just can't control these thoughts they're just overwhelming me little did Judas know those thoughts had a sender they were made not in China but in hell those thoughts were demonic in nature they were not his thoughts they've been planted there by someone and by cooking those thoughts rehearsing those thoughts thinking on those thoughts what it did is it opened his heart and during communion a demon enters into Judas that means you can be even in the right place but if your thinking is wrong you will be visited not by the place you go to but by the state of mind you maintain if you maintain the state of mind that is negative you can be in a positive place and live a negative life God wants us to be whatever we are at today but to keep a mindset that is focused on meditating on the precepts on the presence on the peace and on the glory of God overcome this myth I can't do it yes you might not be able to change your circumstances yes you might not be able to right now stop the pain in your body stop your family from behaving the way they behave or change your husband or change your wife you may not be able to change what happens to you but my friend you are responsible for what happens in you you are responsible for what's happening here otherwise Bible wouldn't tell us to think on these things otherwise Bible wouldn't say as a man thinketh so is he it would say as a man is so he thinks otherwise Paul and Silas wouldn't be singing in jail they would be whining and complaining in jail Paul and Silas in jail did not reflect their circumstances they responded to God meditated on God the back is hurting there's blood coming out because they were beaten they were emotionally distraught because they were falsely accused but see they were shielded because when you're in a secret place you are protected your meditation provides protection for you but the best part about secret place is the moment meditating on the Holy Spirit throughout your day protects you at the same time as it protects you it powers you up 
because God didn't send his spirit to protect you from the outside influence he sent his spirit to change the outside influence but before he changes those influences a lot of times he protects us from the intrusion of those influences I just want to take one more moment and remind some people here today who have problems that caved on you that got inside of you and you're playing a victim you're like a thermometer walking around only measuring the climate of your heart and telling everybody the reason why I'm so down is because my life is so hard that's not entirely true Titanic did not sink because there was too much water in the ocean there was always water in the ocean Titanic sunk because the water went inside of the Titanic Victor Frank he said something that really touched me. Victor Frank in 1942, he was a director of neuro neurological department in Vienna. He was forced by Nazis to abort his child. Him and his wife Tilly, they were deported, arrested. Very shortly after that his father died. In 1944, so two years later, his wife and his mom and him were sent to Auschwitz where his mom was pretty much burned to death in one of the guest chambers. His wife was taken from him and he wasn't sure what happened to her. Turns out that pretty much the same year his wife died in some other city being only 24 years of age. In 1945 he was freed by US forces and he found out this terrible news that his wife is dead, his mom is dead and his father is dead and pretty much everything is really bad. He wrote a bunch of books but in one statement he said this, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. It is the gift that God has given to you to not live from the outside in but to live from the inside out. For some of us it will come naturally, as simple as this, your thoughts go bad, you redirect them toward God. For some of us, we will have to turn our worry into worship. Some of us, we will need to stop talking about our problem and start talking to our problem. Some of us in here, our thoughts are such a spoiled brat that they're not going to listen to you. You're going to have to put handcuffs on your thoughts. What the scripture says, getting your thoughts captive and bringing them to submission to Jesus. This whole little thing, I don't want to you know touch him inappropriate, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be rough with my thoughts. You're gonna have to understand your thoughts are not always re resemblance of you. Sometimes they're running around like this crazy child and you got to get them and like the Bible says in here you make them captive, not the children, don't make the children captive, go police for that, but your thoughts make them captive. What do you do when you make them captive? Meaning you sit back, your spirit sits back and says you know what I've been meditating about this fear, I've been meditating about my future, I've been meditating about my past, this person has said this about me, that person has said this to me and all of these things my thoughts have been running rampant and you put your thoughts down and you say sit down. Now listen to me, that's what people said about you but that's not what God said about you. Then you put handcuffs on your thoughts and you tell them what to think. You train your mind on what to think because if you don't, you have to understand one this is that you're opening your heart to the visitation of the demonic. Today it starts with worry, tomorrow insomnia comes in. The day after you will need pills just to get up from your bed. And the day after there will be a spirit of heaviness that will come in and you're not going to want to do anything and the heaviest drugs are not going to get you from the couch. Devil has an agenda and his agenda is not to slow you down. His agenda is to completely paralyze you and to hang you as he did with Judas. So that's why you can't play games. You can't just be relaxed with your thoughts if they're dominantly evil. You got to sit them down and if they don't listen, handcuff them. And say come on let's go to school. I'm gonna give you some lessons. I'm gonna remind you my mind about the blood. I know you only know about my sin. Let me tell you about the cross because you don't know about the cross. See but there, there is a cross. It's bigger than my sin. The thoughts will tell you by what this is what people say. I know what they said. Thank you but let me tell you what God said. You begin to take your mind to school. 
and you begin to train your mind how to think somebody give God some praise right now and what this will do my friend what this will do is that your meditation your meditation creates a visitation Holy Spirit begins to visit you right there as you do what you do you're doing laundry you're folding laundry you're thinking about something what if you would switch that to the frequency of the Holy Spirit and think about God's presence God's promise God's goodness to you think about talk to the Holy Spirit in your thoughts say Holy Spirit you're my friend Holy Spirit I love you Holy Spirit thank you for being with me you what this is what happens is your heart is first protected from the outside influence and then you walk out from that laundry mat or whatever you were folding your clothes and the problems are still there but you're no longer swimming like Peter Jesus help me you're walking like Jesus and say anybody I can help right there give me a hand problem is still the same you are different right now the ground there has my car parked on it you can build a house on it it will still hold it why not because the ground is not heavy it's because what's underground is strong but the best part about this is not the Holy Spirit only guards my heart from outside intrusion. Holy Spirit empowers my spirit to do battle. Because see, problem is not the only one that's aggressive. Water is such, if you make a hole, it doesn't ask for anybody's permission water and the ocean did not ask Titanic hey how many people are there in Titanic oh there's thousands nah I'm not gonna go into Titanic why I don't want to kill all the people water doesn't ask questions water doesn't give them a time to evacuate water aggressively forcefully pushes his way its way it doesn't matter who it damages it doesn't matter what it does it doesn't matter if it's a structure some of you've seen floods it goes through a highway it puts cars and moves cars it takes larger structures and levels them and moves all the levels, uh, the hard structures because that's the force of water. There is another force that exists. Jesus says in John, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive... In the original language, that word is dunamis, which is explosive force. See, Holy Spirit is not just someone who comes in, closes down all the windows, say, let's hang in there until, until rapture. Why? Just things that are so bad. But I got you guys. Come over here, little chickens under my, under my wing. Uh, let, me, uh, let me hide you. Holy Spirit is C4. Come on, come on. He says, which buildings do we need to bring down? He comes in first and he says, let me cover you. He says, let me protect you. He says, let me cover you. Let me protect you. But after that he says I got too much of C4 to just simply stay down. See when Jesus had peace in the storm he didn't just wake up and told disciples hey guys look at me I can sleep in this storm. He says I can sleep in this storm. That means I can speak to the storm. That means I can stop the storm. And he rebuked them. He says, why aren't you guys sleeping? Why aren't you not doing anything about the C4 that's been given to you? The power that's been given to you? The Holy Spirit that lives in me, he protects me from the outside only to power me up to influence the outside, to intrude on the outside, to step upon the outside, to walk out from the outside and to tell that problem, listen problem, you're not the only one that's forceful. You haven't met the real force yet. He is so much stronger than you. I know you would like to intrude on my peace. I would like to intrude on you. And we would like to bring those structures, those walls of Jericho down. Come on somebody. Smith Wigglesworth um, one time went to a funeral. It was a five-year-old boy that died he wept at that funeral because this boy has so much life still in him he asked everyone at the time it was funerals where you know it wasn't like this right now where we have um, the the dead boy could stay there with her family and so he asked all the family to leave he said give me just a few moments he went closed the doors took the the boy out of the casket Dra he was a big guy so he dragged him out nobody nobody was there because this would be really bad he puts that dead boy to the wall that boy keeps falling off he says stand he puts him leaves him and then walks on the other room on the other side of the room and begins to command life to come into a corpse how is that even possible 
how can the man take something that's dead and speak life to it it's possible if the bible says guard your heart because out of it flows things see we're only used to garbage flowing in god says my spirit makes power possible to flow out in john chapter uh, 8 it's, it's john chapter 7 it says that rivers of living water will flow out meaning and these rivers they carry life whatever these rivers touch they can bring life and that boy five years of age who was dead they had his funeral walked from that wall to that guy now he says i've never seen this happen before but it happened and then when the doors were open two both people alive walked out because a man carried not only a presence that protected him he carried a presence that powered him up there is a power in the holy spirit to protect you but that power is enough to power you up to give power to your voice to give power to your command to give power to your prayer to give power to your confession to give power to your fasting and to your prayer somebody give god some praise for power somebody give god some praise for power the holy power god's power god's power some trust in green power some trust in black power some trust in white power we have the holy ghost power it's the best power it's the clean power it's the holy power and that power resurrects the dead and that power heals the sick and that power turns backsliding children back home that power takes asthma and destroys it that power takes tuberculosis and reverses it that power lives inside of you that power lives inside of you santo calaba santaya that power belongs to us i want to remind you today don't limit the holy spirit to only protecting you from the outside influence because he's so much more he came so we can influence the outside so that it will be said about us what it says about disciples these have turned the world upside down it didn't say about them oh we persecuted them we crushed them fed them to the lions but they're still happy they were more than happy they were conquerors they influenced their world for the kingdom of God they didn't just protect it in their peace they let the river flow out have you let your heart become a septic septic tank of all the sewer or have you let it become a fountain of living water where things come out have you reduced your spiritual life to becoming a thermometer you're simply you're mad why because everything is bad meaning your heart pretty much just tells everybody where your life is God wants your heart not to be a thermometer. God wants it to be a thermostat. Will you punch in God's promises? Will you punch in what the Lord says about you? And even if your outside is not changing, on the inside you're in a different climate. And then when you walk out, you carry an atmosphere shifting anointing. Where you walk into your workplace, you walk into your family, and even if things are negative, there's something about you. You are a walking light you carry darkness has to leave where you walk in it might not leave the earth but it will leave where you stand why because you have a river of living water that protects you from the outside but it cannot protect the outside from you Shirley and Ron were in a accident where a drunk driver hit them Shirley quickly became useless became a vegetable she lost her sight her hearing intensified she could hear through the thick walls she wasn't able to move the spine was broken things were just just shattered and the doctors did everything they could all the surgeries all the stuff and then they were not able to fix her up and they sent her home to die and Ron himself was damaged because of that accident but a little bit less than his wife and they both sit pretty much in misery they started to seek for solution for seven years they were looking for an answer from God she wasn't dying but she wasn't living and nor was he and one time he got so fed up he took some tapes of healing scriptures uh, the, 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 it was during the time of tapes not the cds or podcasts he laid his hands on the tapes and he said lord we're gonna listen to these tapes until we die but you either heal us or we're gonna die listening to this but we're not gonna live the same 18 hours later of listening to healing tapes tired and exhausted but you know when you listen to that for so long 
your sinkhole becomes filled your body might still be sick your mind is no more sick according to him you can watch his testimony on YouTube he said he felt electric light like an electricity went from like the roof of his uh, from the ceiling and the roof of his house straight into his chest he thought he had a cardiac arrest that's why he saw he said the light he, he quickly fell out of the chair landed on the floor thinking he's dying little did he know it was a visitation because see your meditation prepares you for visitation visitation of God came he opened his eyes he thought he was in another world already turns out he was in the same kitchen and there was sick wife sitting still listening to the tapes he quickly gets up and realizes completely healed grabs his wife and says listen honey we were both in the same accident there was no way God would just heal me and not you if we were both in the same accident get up and his poor wife gets up with him he begins to speak over her he says begin to declare God's word and he just went forcefully with her and right there and then that healing that was in him started manifesting in her and now it's been seven years and this couple is serving God completely restored for the glory of God what is that your meditation prepares you for visitation but it's more than that it sets you up for transformation what you meditate on constantly the goal is not to pray a lot is to think about God a lot and let that spill into prayer let that let your prayer come out of that because for some of us prayer is just two hours of warring it's just 40 minutes of anxious thinking that prayer does you no good it does God no good does nobody good God wants us to abide in him to allow his word throughout the day you might not be able to control all of your thoughts control dominant ones and replace them with God thoughts talk to Holy Spirit think about his goodness think about what he's done and if you're not able to do that find a YouTube channel listen to some testimonies listen to some sermons watch some services turn on a worship music do things that will stimulate your mind to think opposite of what you're going through so that your thermometer becomes a thermostat and you change your situation somebody give us some praise Woo! David Hogan uh, David Hogan I think it's about 30 something people that uh, was raised from the dead through personally through him and through his team about 500 people that were raised from the dead and right there in the in the jungles in the remote areas in Mexico where he was a missionary he said that I decided to reach to people who don't know about Jesus and I wanted to see God move powerfully and so he was he was a little bit he's a little bit non normal guy because he wrote all the miracles in the Bible and decided to put a raising of the dead as the miracle he would want to start with usually a raising of the dead is the miracle you hopefully end with one of these days you know you start with back pain you know headache um, you know something slower and so he's like you know what I'm just gonna put it the raising of the dead is what I want to start with and so the moment he started to believe for raising of the dead the problem with that is that you have to have people dying this is the only miracle that requires death <laughs> so you don't want to start with that miracle because that means people need to die four years witches and warlocks attacking him things are not happening and he said I've never seen it never heard anybody up to that point you know happening with this and then one day he said prayed for hours and in the jungles one guy came to me and says uh, David could you come please and pray for my son he is terribly ill it took hours to get to that house they come into that hut there are healers and spiritualists all kinds of people doing their chants because I guess it was not a Christian family and after they did everything they said hey well now it's your turn try your God he says I prayed in English nothing prayed in Spanish nothing I prayed in tongues nothing I prayed in Indian nothing then he says I got up and I started weeping and I said God for an hour he wept in front of that boy put his hand weeping over that boy and as his his face was in his chest He said I stopped weeping and I realized the heartbeat came back and the boy got up and God resurrected the boy from the dead and he says this is how the first time I've seen the resurrection he says I never read a manual I did not know the formula how to pray I just knew one thing greater is he that is in me than the one that's in that 
and I decided let the river flow out of me into that situation. You might be facing something today that's terminal. You might be facing something today that's that's impossible. We might prayed for it. We all might have prayed for it for a very long time. You might be watching us right now and you're facing something that the doctor said there is no hope for that. Maybe you are drowning under the weight of your problem. I want to tell you something today. You were never designed to be a garbage can. You're a fireplace. The Holy Spirit wants to take residence inside of you. He wants to protect you from the outside influences. But not only that, He wants to fire you up. He wants to show the world who's in charge. He wants to show your problem. He's way greater, way bigger than any other problem. He wants to manifest His goodness in your life and His love and His mercy and His compassion. He wants to protect you. I feel like in this room there are people even as I'm looking over you, you're like a beautiful lawn that's caving in. Your education, your connections, your appearance, your wonderful looking Instagram profile is all a facade because on the inside you're bleeding, you're dying and it's not because you don't pray, it's that your meditation is wrong and today we're not here to judge you. We're not here to point fingers and say you're bad. We're here today to challenge you and to say let's do it together. But if you are here and you say, Vlad, you know what? I recognize that's me. I recognize I'm the sinking hole Christian. I am on the inside. I don't meditate. My thoughts have taken a turn where it's draining me and today I'm battling with things. I, I take, take pills to sleep. I can't function and all of these things and I need some help. Today is your day where the Lord not only wants to pull you out. He wants to come inside. And he wants to fill you and overflow you into your circumstances. So when you walk to work tomorrow, light walks to work tomorrow. When you go to a job interview, you don't go to a job interview as beaten by life. You go into a job interview with your shoulders squared, your head lifted high. Why? Because greater is he that is in you. Because the river lives inside of you. You're not a garbage can, a septic tank. You're a river, a fountain, a well. Miracles can happen. That means you can get the job you didn't apply for. You can get the job you didn't qualify for. Things that never happened in your family can happen. Things that everybody said is not possible can happen. Things you prayed for and believed for seven, eight years can happen. Why? Because the Spirit, the Spirit, it's not by mind. It's not by power. It's by my Spirit, says the Lord. And He lives inside of you. He is here right now. If you sing glad this message is for me, I recognize I need that help today. Get out of your seat and come to the front and we're gonna pray. Get out of your seat and come to the front and we're gonna believe with you. We're gonna believe the Holy Spirit will touch you. We believe that God will visit you right now in this room.